okay thank you uh, today we'll start the introduction to statistics uh, in the statistics for engineers in the cc program uh, for the first as the first lecture we will uh, will introduce the introduction to statistics actually how uh, why we use statistics in uh, in different uh, applications as engineering application especially and uh, what's the history of statistics or the application in different fields uh, real life fields of statistics we'll discuss and the and different computation in a statistical tool we will introduce in this class okay introduction to statistics first of all the, uh, as an introduction the word statistics uh, word statistics uh, conveys a variety of meaning to people in different walks of life actually this word statistics words conveys a variety of meaning to people in different walks of life uh, and the other hand the word statistics comes from uh, italian word statista statista means actually statement uh, statista means statement and another another part of word german word statistic which uh, which mean political state actually this statistics state plastic uh, from greek words uh, state means you must know the area of a country or a country uh, and statistic means actually uh, knowledge about uh, so uh, statistics means knowledge about st state so the word statistics today refers to either quantitative information or a method of dealing with quantitative or qualitative information so as a definition we can uh, say what is a statistics actually so the statist uh, according to this uh, statistician uh, statistics is defined as collection presentation analysis and interpretation of numerical data so as a simple definition of statistics we can say that statistics is defined as collection we have to uh, first of all you have to collect data uh, from sample uh, with sample uh, and we have to first of all you have to select a population then from that population we have to select a sample then we can collect data uh, presentation we have to present this and, uh, and we have to analyze this also uh, this collection and interpretation of numerical data is called definition this is the actual definition of statistics so statistics is the science and art of dealing with figures and facts we also say that uh, what is a statistics statistics is the sciences and art of dealing with figures and facts another word bio statistics actually bio means life statistics life of statistics it is also called life of statistics bio statistics so bio statistics is the branch of statistics applied to biological or medical science actually in this uh, pandemic situation covid 19 uh, we have to we uh, to uh, to uh, invent a, uh, the, the vaccine of covid 19 actually uh, in this pandemic situation different scientists uh, trying their best to uh, to uh, make a fruitful vaccine uh, with the help of this bio statistics actually uh, they have to uh, make uh, analysis with the patient okay uh, again collecting data from patient they have to uh, make an effective vaccine with the help of bio statistics so bio statistics is the branch of statistics applied to biological or medical sciences actually so bio statistics is the methods used in dealing with statistics in the field of health science health science means actually medical science such as biology medicine nursing public health etc you must know these uh, simple words actually biology bio means actually life uh, life of knowledge biology and medicine you must know nursing people health etc will deal with what bio statistics so biostatistics is the branch of statistics applied to biology or medical science so biostatistics is also called biometry you must know uh, when you can uh, when you are buying a sim card uh, from a shop then you have to uh, give the fingerprint that means biometric method you have uh, you are collecting sim by using biometric method so biostatistics is also called biometry bio means life 
you, you are using fingerprint or Irish uh, when you uh, uh, when you want to collect uh, um, this, uh, visa or any passport then you have to give the Irish or fingerprint then this is called also biometry then in Greek words bio means bios means life and metron means measurement okay measured so biometry means what actually it is called measurement of life now uses and application of statistics actually why are we use uh, this statistics in uh, uses and application of statistics actually in this uh, in this case we can uh, observe this uh, uh, there are de different types of definition of statistics in R and Shield book. Okay, Ramindranath Shield. Statistics, uh, uh, Webster is a famous statistician, defined the statistics as statistics are classified facts representing the condition of the people in a state. State means what? In a country uh, or in a big part of a country, especially those facts which can be stated in numer numbers or in tables of numbers or any other tabular or classified arrangement. That means we have to collect a data and we have to arrange this with a number or a tabular form or classified form. Okay. So this is the web star definition and uses a, a, of a statistics in different field or application. First of all, you have to, uh, we are, if we consider the agriculture, First of all, agriculture, agriculture planning, eh, agriculture planning, biology, psychology, education, economics, business management, or management of an industry, eh, or any or a big farm, uh, etc. You have to use uh, or you have to take help from statistics. In short, following are different important fields. Those statistics statistics can be extensively used. Actually, first of all, agriculture. Uh, it has a big contribution. Uh, to uh, agriculture to have information to regards the total production of a certain agriculture product total cultivable land consumption of different types of crops different types of and levels of irrigations for different types of agricultural products different uh, different doses for uh, fertilizers and distribution of the optimum doses of different fertilizers actually uh, we need fertilizers for different part of land to uh, to to grow more crops okay so in this case we have to use actually statistics planning first uh, then planning at the age of planning the government has to take help from the from the subject statistics in case of doing any fruitful planning policy formulation for building a sound economy and economical development St uh, statistical tools are applied to knowing the rate of unemployment uh, actually, what's the rate of unemployment uh, in our country? Actually, what's the rate of illiteracy rate? Illiteracy rate what? National income what? Rate of national income? Cost of living expenditure, how many expenditure? Net profit in a certain management. Actually, in a big, uh, in a big, uh, in a big uh, farm uh, or industry, um, you, you have to manage certain management. You have to need certain management to calculate net profit for that management for determining poverty line. Actually, our poverty line uh, now uh, not so below. Uh, so, uh, for determining the poverty line, the uh, rate for literacy, uh, literacy rate, how many? Thus, and in every successful planning, sound and correct analysis of complex statistical data are required. That means in this case, we have to need, we have to take help from what? Statistics for every planning of a government. That means uh, the, whole, the government controlling the whole country with the help of statistics. Uh, and the third one, the economics, number of economics problems such as wages, wages of a government employees or non-government employees, prices, analyze uh, prices of products, any products, rice, wheat, fish, meat, etc. Analysis of time series data. Okay. The, uh, different types of data depends on time. Okay, then you have to analyze it with time series. Demand analysis, demand, what's the demand of consumer? Cost and benefit analysis, what's the cost and benefit for the consumer? Required statistical data and proper use of statistical techniques. It also facilitates the development of the economic theory. Okay. 
So in the scales, uh, we need to take uh, the help of statistics. In business also, that means uh, you must know the business. Uh, suppose uh, suppose Apple, uh, Apple is a big company uh, of the world. So their policy, their uh, their brandings, and their new uh, uh, new products, uh, how to uh, sell in market, they need to they must need to take help from statistics. So in business, it has contributed must. So in industry, in, in a big industry, uh, we, there are more application of statistics. In biological science, actually, in this, uh, we must know introduced with COVID-19. So in this COVID-19 situation, uh, every scientist, actually biological scientist, need, need a take from help where? From, from statistics. Uh, they, need to they need to make a successful vaccine. So to make a successful vaccine, they need to uh, take the analysis, the data with the help of patient. They need to they need them needed patients okay so to uh, make a successful vaccine uh, they need to take help from statistics so in biology in psychology and education education you must know actually your mark sheet of ssc or acc you must know it's just one page one page mark sheet evaluate the whole two years uh, successful in intermediate level in college level you have you have passed two years first year second year but in one page only one page indicates the successful of two years that means statistics shows in in shortly statistics present in a short form with the whole of a period okay so in psychology in education in every higher we are using statistics in mark sheet of any in mark sheet of first semester second semester after completion of eighth semester the whole uh, mark sheet of fourth year that means final honors mark sheet will be also reflect the four years honors only one page mark sheet that means statistics this is the statistics you are applying average number of any sub courses the total cgpa cgpa cumulative uh, uh, great point so every in every higher we are using statistics in our everyday life so in medicine to make a successful medicine okay uh, we have to apply uh, the experiment with the patient uh, or to make any successful drugs or medicine uh, you need to take the statistical data uh, there are various types of actually uh, application in uh, statistics you can find out in from google or any other textbook provided in google classroom okay in uses and application of statistics uh, actually from uh, this eight application or uses of statistics we found it facilitates the comparisons okay facilitates the comparisons that means which is better field uh, which is better land to uh, grow more crops okay it facilitates comparisons uh, it simplifies the message of figure that means uh, when two game uh, two uh, two team of uh, cricket team uh, when you see the graph then you must simplify the message for from figure it helps in formulating and testing hypothesis uh, in uh, in our uh, uh, next uh, final term we will test the hypothesis this is the actually another chapter for us in statistics uh, it helps in prediction prediction means actually which is better which one will be the most helpful uh, uh, just in, this indication is called prediction uh, it help in prediction scale of measurement actually the measurement uh, what is the measurement in statistics uh, the measurement is the process of assigning numbers or level to objects, persons, states, or even in accordance with the specific rules to represent quantities or qualities of a, attributes. We do not measure a specific objects, person, etc. We measure attributes or features that define them, okay? which is definitely uh, we have to measure. Four basic scales of measurement, nominal scale, ordinal, uh, interval scales, and ratio scales. This is the four basic scales of measurement in statistics uh, we can write these ty uh, types of measurement scale like this uh, one is uh, nominal uh, ordinal interval and ratio okay so what is the actually nominal uh, measurement 
uh, there must be distinct classes but these classes have no quantitative properties therefore no comparisons can be made in terms of one category being higher than the other for example there are two classes for the variable gender male and female in a class there are male and female there are no quantitative properties for this variable or these classes therefore gender is a nominal variable that means there is no number for that just so i we are terming uh, x for uh, uh, females and y for males then this is actually example of nominal measurement sometimes the numbers are used to distinguish uh, the uh, des designated category number ship jump for one one is one is for united states two for mexico three for canada etc we can use numbers for nominal measurement another one is ordinal scale what is the actually ordinal scale there are distinct classes but these classes have a natural ordering or ranking naturally the difference can be ordered on the basis of magnitudes magnitudes actually value of measurement for example final position of horses in a through through bred race through bred race is an ordinal variable actually there is a race of horse the horses finishes first second third fourth etc okay the difference between first and second is not necessarily equivalent to the difference between second and third so this is the ordinal ordinal scale okay uh, does not assume that the interval uh, between numbers are equal interval may be equal or not okay so uh, who is fast fast horses one hour after one hour he finished uh, he, he placed fast uh, and uh, and after three hours second place after four hour third place but their difference what two hours and and this second place and third place difference what one hour okay so interval are not equal but fourth place six hours after six hours fourth place horse okay so they are difference what five hours difference this is why actually uh, does not assume that the interval between numbers are equal now interval scale interval means interval will be equal it is possible to compare differences in magnitudes but importantly the zero point does not have a natural meaning you must know zero is not have a natural meaning it captures the properties of nominal and ordinal scale used by most psychological test designated in equal interval ordering the distance between for example uh, a 1 and a 2 is the same as the distance between a4 and a5 that means their interval 2 minus 1 what 1 5 minus 4 what 1 that means interval are equal and this is called actually interval scale suppose uh, in temperature 10 degree means what for 50 fahrenheit 20 degree means 68 fahrenheit so another temperature 25 degree celsius 35 degree celsius but we cannot say that 20 degree celsius is twice as hot as a temperature of 10 degree celsius 20 degree celsius and 10 degree celsius means doesn't means that uh, tw twice okay difference between temperature this is the actually interval scale example another example here you can uh, use this is mean uh, celsius temperature is an interval variable it is meaningful to say that 25 degrees celsius is 3 degrees hotter than 22 degrees okay 22 degrees uh, 3 degrees hotter than 22 degrees when temperature is 25 degrees celsius another one and uh, that 17 degrees celsius is the same amount hotter 3 degrees than 14 degrees celsius that means their interval is equal so notice that however that 0 degree celsius does not have a natural meaning the 0 degree celsius does not mean that the absence of heat there is actually heat but 0 degree centigrade means what uh, ice 0 degree centigrade means actually ice of temperature temperature of ice now the ratio scale what is ratio scale it is the highest level of measurement ratio this level has all the three attributes that means magnitudes we must need to represent magnitudes equal interval absolute zero point it represent continuous bell also in by in, in biophysical parameters weight height volume blood pressure uh, we are using this is the daily uses measurement weight height volume and blood pressure 
this is the biophysical parameter suppose 30 kg is thrice into 10 kg you must know 10 kg rice and 30 kg rice how many difference three times 20 cm twice 10 cm you must know 8 hours is 4 times 2 hours okay 4 to 8 this is why 8 hours is 4 time of 2 hours now types of measurement scale types of each of each of these scale have different properties differences magnitudes equal intervals or through zero point and allows for the different representation now uh, this is the actually primary scale of measurement so uh, we have uh, defined scale nominal ordinal interval and ratio this is the actually symbol for that okay this is the actually example and this is the basic differences and characteristics and with examples nominal ordinal interval and ratio okay uh, and basic characteristics this common examples we, we cited these examples marketing examples this for business and economics a descriptive statistic descriptive okay descriptive statistics used to organize and summarize the data to draw meaningful interpretations and another word descriptive statistics deal with the enumeration enumeration organization and graphical representation of data this is the two main theme uh, of descriptive statistics now in descriptive the statistics includes measure to in condense data measures of central tendency measures of central tendency measures of dispersion and measures of relationship okay relationship between two variables or multiple variables which are correlation regression types okay we will study it in, uh, in our near classes uh, near after classes and dispersion also measures of dispersion of central tendency this is the midterm syllabus we will study this too actually now the what is population and sample okay what is population and what is sample population means an aggregate of elements processing certain characteristics of interest in any particular investigation or inquiry it is generally named after the characteristics studied population may be finite or infinite actually when we will study about a region chittagong region okay uh, the whole division of chittagong will be the population understand now we will we will try to find out the literature rate of uh, chittagong division now the we have to find out a, a district with big with high literacy rate okay and we have to select another district with middle literacy rate and we have to select another uh, district which has very well very low literacy rate then if we take average of that then you can measure the whole division the rate of literacy rate of whole division of chitang understand so ch here chitang is the population and we have selected three district okay one is high literacy rate district another middle literacy rate and another one is lower literacy rate then three district is called what sample and here population what whole district whole division whole division okay so a sample uh, a sample is a representative part of the population sample is what actually representative part of a population we are generally in, interested to know the properties of the population sometimes it is interpractical or even impossible to handle the population because of limited resources that means there are different types of resources needed uh, to make a sample perfect that is why interference about the population are usually draws on the basis of the sample now another word what is variable Actually, as an engineering student, you must know uh, what is variable. Yeah. Uh, uh, this the changeable values. Okay, uh, the measurement of elements of a population having certain characteristics may vary from element to element. 
either in magnitudes or in quality or both. These measurable characteristics is called variables. This is the definition of variables. There are two types of variables. One is qualitative variables and another is quantitative variables. Okay. Uh, which represents quality. Yeah. Another one quantitative means what? Which represents in numerically. Okay. Numerical data. Depends on numerical data. And there is qualitative data. This is why there are two types of variable. Remember it. Suppose, for example, the outcomes of a coin tossing problem uh, gives quanti qualitative variables with two categories, or head or tail. Okay, When we toss a coin, uh, the outcome will be what? Head or tail. So this is the actually qualitative variable. There, there is no qu quantity. That means there, there is no number. This is why no quantity. The sex of persons had two categories, male or female. The categories are also sometimes called the attributes. These years of crops, height of persons, the number of children in a family, etc., they may consider as a quantitative variable. That means quantitative means what? Numerical representation. The number of uh, number of children in a family. Okay, uh, amount of crops in a field, height of a person. Suppose height of a any students of your class. Uh, this will be represented by what? Quantitative variables. A quantity represents for that types of variables. Okay. So again, quantitative variables may be classified into two types of namely discrete variable and other is continuous variable. Discrete variables means what? The, the numer numerals will be discrete, not continuously. One uh, from, uh, started from one point and, uh, and there is no equal interval. Okay. Between the, uh, between the another point. So this is called actually discrete variables. And another one is continuous variable. The suppose class interval of any data class interval you have to make you have made class intervals in our previous uh, classes in so this is the class when we you can make a class interval for a specific data, then this will be what continuous variable. Okay, now discrete variable suppose uh, the mass of 30 students are given values. Actually, this is the discrete variable after making a tabula a tally making a, using tally you can make a class interval okay then it will becomes actually continuous variable when the variable can assume any integral values is called discrete for example the number of children in a family actually this is the discrete a variable is said to be continuous if it assumes any values within the certain range for example height of a person Suppose height of a person is the actually continuous person because it is gradually increasing from one point to another point. Suppose 5.6 is the uh, when the lower height will be five feet and uh, highest will be six feet, but the average what will be 5.6 feet, okay? Five, 5.6 inches, five feet, six inches. So the actually the height is the actually continuous variable remember it now frequency distribution frequency distribution suppose marks of statistics of 100 students of a certain university this is the 100 students marks this is the actually discrete data and discrete variables also this is represented by rep discrete represent uh, variables now we can take a we can make a class interval with that okay class in per interval intervals uh, suppose marks marks how many marks actually uh, 25 marks 26 27 actually there are 32 33 34 up to what this is the 40 this is the highest marks and this is the lowest marks okay after making tally marks you must know about from class 5 4 6 7 8 you must know about this uh, 3 3 means 3 frequency there are 3 times 25 okay and three me this three means what? 326 here. In this 100 students data, 26, how many? Three. So this is the actually frequency, frequency, this three. This after four, you have to make the crossbar, okay? This is the five, six, seven. This is the seven. And there is no data for 31, okay? So zero. This is the actually frequency, frequency. And marks, marks, Marks for 41, 
42, 41, how many? Six. Six students got 41. Two students got 42. Two students 43. Okay. In this way, total, this is the total number of frequency. And X lies between what? 25 to 29. 30 lies between X lies between 30 to 34 as soon. If we make these types of class interval, this will be actually continuous. Suppose we have made a class interval. Suppose 25 to 29. How many students got these marks? Actually, uh, after making tally, you can compute the frequency. 13 students got marks 25 to 29. Okay, 30 to 34, how many students got? 15 students got uh, marks. 35 to 39, 15 students got. And 45 to 49, how many students got? 22. So in this way, we can make tally in the th uh, second column and frequency, total number of uh, bar in frequency, represent frequency. So this is the continuous table. Okay, continuous data. Understand? And this is? And this is called discrete data, okay? Discrete data for frequency distribution of marks of what? 100 students. This is the discrete data for a discrete or a discrete variable, okay? Now, this is the continuous data. Remember it. Class interval will represent continuous data. Remember it. So, frequency distribution of A's, we can... Uh, we can make a, a 25 to 30 years will be two person, 30 to 35 will be five person. In this way, we can make also frequency distribution. Uh, concentration now. Now how to construct a frequency distribution? Following are the steps for the construction of a dist frequency distribution. First of all, you have to find out the range by subtracting the lowest value from the highest value. Okay, first of all, you have to find out the highest value and lowest value. In our previous data, 25 is the lowest value and 59 is the highest value, okay? Okay, in discrete, 25 is the lowest value and 55 is the highest value, okay? In this whole discrete data, 100 students, marks of 100 students in this data, 25 is the lowest and 55 is the highest value. First, first of all, you have to make the range by subtracting lowest value from highest value. The number of class intervals should not to be very large or not to very small. Usually lies between five to 10, okay? 20, five to 20. Considering the practical situation, having fixed the number of classes, divide the range by it and the nearest integer, to these values gives the length of the class interval. The class interval should be exhaustive, mutually exclusive and mutually mutually of equal length. The table will have two, three columns, three columns, five names, class interval. One is, class, first of all, class interval, then tally marks, okay? And another one is what? Frequency distribution. So these three columns will be needed. And give tick marks to each of the values of the original value, tick marks, okay? Or raw, raw data and put tally marks against the appropriate. Uh, you must know about this uh, 25 to 30 or uh, 25 to 29, we have to make a tally mark for one, for 25 marks, okay? Uh, you have to make, a, you have to give a tick mark for after putting tally, understand? Just the method of class five students. Now graphical representation of frequency distribution. Uh, actually, there are uh, five types of graphical representation for one is dot frequency diagram, histogram, frequency polygon, cumulative frequency polygon, and another is cumulative frequency curve or OGIV curve. Actually, we see this every curves in our cricket tournament, in, a, in our cricket match. Uh, dot frequency diagram, dot ball. Every ball can be represented. Uh, suppose a baller, uh, ball 10 overs. Every ball can be represented at dot. Uh, suppose uh, some balls uh, got wicket, then this will be blinked with red. Okay, blinked with red. That means dot frequency diagram. Suppose histogram, in, in, the, in his 10 overs, 
f in every uh, every hour how many runs are given okay this can be represented as a histogram suppose in third hour he he uh, the box is very high in third hour okay the column is very high that means it represents he 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 uh, he gives many runs in third hour that means this is the actually histogram frequency polygon cumulative frequency polygon cumulative frequency o curve or ogip suppose dot uh, dot diagram this like this types actually in first hour or in uh, first session in second session in third session of a test this is the dot ball okay now histogram uh, histogram like this suppose this is the class interval this is the mid values mid values means what this plus this divided by 2 this plus this divided by 2 okay this plus this divided by 2 and this is the frequency this will be given or you have to find out by tally by using tally you can find out this from discrete data but this is the continuous data remember uh, this is the continuous data and frequency cumulative frequency do you know suppose 13 first cumulative frequency will be 13 then sum of 13 plus 15 will be second one that is what 28 yes 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 actually right Com uh, cumulative frequency it is 13 first one 13 13 plus 15 what 28 28 plus 15 what 43 43 plus 16 59 59 59 59 plus 22 equal to what 81 81 1 plus 17 98 98 plus 2 equal to 100 this is the actually cumulative frequency of our previous discrete data marks of a 100 students in statistics understand this is the actually polygon sorry histogram this one the histogram this is the x axis and this is the class interval okay this is the class interval and it it starts from where 24.5 and and 29.5 difference what 5 that means 5 units this is start with 24.5 and with what 25.5 Right. That means there are five difference, and how many frequency there are? Thirteen. That means in in y axis we will go how how many? Thirteen. This is the ten. Uh, this is the ten twelve twelve point five. This is the thirteen. Okay. This box height will be what? Like this. Similarly, second for second interval this box and frequency will be this, and for third interval we get this. height uh, this is the actually parallel uh, para, uh, rectangle okay rectangle another for one another one we get this for the uh, for the uh, last last we get this that means x x in x axis class interval and in y axis what frequency distribution remember it we get the histogram this is called histogram and this is the actually how we can make a histogram this is the steps read your own self now frequency polygon okay uh, in in pre, in frequency polygon the mid values of the class interval are represented along x axis along x axis mid values okay and along y axis what frequency distribution then the, we get these types of curve actually this is called frequency polygon remember it now cumulative frequency polygon if we use cumulative frequency in the in a polygon then the upper limits of the continuous class interval are represented the in x axis upper limit of the continuous class interval upper limit will be upper limit which one uh, actually this is the upper limit 29.5 34.5 this is the upper limit this is the lower limit remember it so upper limits will be in x axis upper limits will be in x axis then uh, upper limit upper limit of the continuous interval are represented in the x axis and the cumulative frequency are represented to the y axis then we get cumulative frequency polygon okay now ogip curve what will be a free hand curve to a smooth cumulative frequency polygon is called ogip curve if we uh, suppose this is the point this point this point this point this point we got cumulative frequency polygon okay cumulative frequency polygon but if we add this point in free hand then we get ogip curve okay frequency curve there are uh, four different types of frequency curve 
four different types of frequency. Like if the number of observations are very large and the length of class intervals can be reduced, the frequency polygon will provide a smooth curve, usually called frequency curve. Okay, so this is the definition of uh, frequency curve. Actually, there are four uh, four types of uh, four types of frequency curve. One is symmetrical curve. Another one is moderately or asymmetrical or skew curve, skew symmetric curve. Extremely asymm asymm uh, asymmetric or Z-shaped curve, U-shaped curve. Actually, symmetrical curve like this. This is the uh, in uh, this is the first quadrant and this is the second quadrant. So, uh, if we divide the whole curve into equal uh, two parts, two parts will be equal. In this case, this curve will called symmetrical curve. Okay. For every values of x, we will put another value of y. Frequency. This, this is the class interval, and in this frequency, and this will be symmetrical curve. Moderate, moderately symmetric. Suppose this is in if it in left hand side. This is uh, this is the peaked in left. This is why positively skewed, and peaked in right. Okay, negatively skewed curve. So moderately uh, symmetrical or skew curve are two types. One is positively skewed, or another one is negatively. Now extremely asymm asymmetric or Z-shaped curve. These types of curve. This is the positive Z-shaped. When uh, this is the origin. Uh, this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. If you get these types of curve, this is the z-shaped curve, and this will be positively z-shaped. But uh, this is the negative negative part of x-axis. This is why these types of curve will be what negatively z-shaped curve. Uh, and if you get the these types of curve, u-shaped. This look like u. A frequency curve is said to be U-shaped if it looks like this letter U. Okay, in this type of curve, the maximum frequency occurs in both of the distribution, while minimum at the mid at the middle. Minimum at the middle. This is the middle. Okay, middle of the U. So the distribution of human death follows a U-shaped curve. Human death will follows U-shaped curve. Suppose this is the birth. But and this is the after we growing, 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 and this is the middle. Then up, then again they are increasing. This is the old. Then, then this is the death. This is the birth, and this is the death of the uh, distribution of any man. So it is called actually U-shaped curve. 